The following podcast is a next level production. Why would he kill Coombs and Connors? He was your team leader. You have any idea? <sighs> I'm really glad to have you with me on this one, pal. Seriously, you're the only one I can count on. Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about The Boys, Season 3, Episode 6, entitled Herogasm. So, I'll talk about the synopsis this time. Go ahead. Alright, the synopsis for this particular episode, Herogasm, you're invited to the 70th annual Herogasm. You must present this invitation in order to be admitted. Same rules as always. No cameras, no non-soup guests unless they sign an NDA and their DTF. And no telling any news media. It's BYOD. But food, alcohol, and lube will be provided. And please remember to RSVP so we can get an accurate headcount for the caterer. <laughs> Thank you, Vought, for that particular synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> Such a wild episode. It is. So uh, with that, we'll go into our initial thoughts about the episode. What were your initial thoughts, Steve? I, just how crazy it is from that very beginning card, which I actually I have a I have it uh, a copy verbatim, that opening title card that they, get, that they gave us to just a wild episode, seeing Love Sausage again and uh, all the <laughs> all the craziness. Uh, a lot happened in this episode. We really moved the story forward quite a bit really but we've also you know got some more questions we still don't know where exactly where Maeve is uh, yeah. we don't know where uh, Noir went we so but it was it was really really good we got uh, another heartbreaking moment between Huey and Annie which I'll talk about yeah. uh, in my in my notes but uh, yeah it was just a, another I can't even say how crazy it was because that's just what that sequence there in the middle when they get to the house is just it's just wild you know uh and and then when Huey interjects himself transports himself in there he fit right in being naked you know <laughs> so yeah just the the overall craziness of it and then him teleporting Annie out and the both of them being naked uh you know on the side of the road and having that confrontation too <laughs> yeah, while they're naked yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so uh but yeah it was it was just really just a wild and crazy episode yeah well mine is my first reaction was wow well, I was impressed with the craziness of this episode. There was a lot of gasm in it. That is for sure, accordingly. Uh, we did, there was that particular plot in be before that we had to see building up to it, which I enjoyed because it kind of, it was basically a setup, which was fine. And we knew it was only going to be X amount and then we get the final ending. But I did love the intro statement. Some scenes may not be suitable for some, really most. Let's be honest, old viewers. But rest assured that any consensual relationships depicted, be they human, animal, superhero, or other, aren't real. Harmed no one, and in fact cost a hilariously large amount in visual effects. <laughs> that, that was the... Uh, the intro to the movie or show as it were and in the episode it's hilarious that i you know that we got that uh i really enjoyed it uh you know honestly the whole hero gasm experience itself now mind you uh, yeah there's more extremism that you could see on pornhub or whatever but with this it was a bit extremism based upon soup stuff but it was definitely something, a marker on television history 
based upon pornography in some respect. Yeah. There are a lot of nude people, a lot of weird things going on with soups or villains. Who knows? And it, it was enjoyable just to see just for a glint. And you go, okay, I saw that. That was interesting. <laughs> and that's it. And you move on to the story at hand, which is what we're more looking forward to. A lot of people who are pervy will probably be looking at that and freeze framing certain <laughs> scenes, but that's their choice. Yeah. But to me, I was more interested in saying, okay, that was the whole experience. It was kind of like a rated R version of like a really bad movie that's out there that everybody's all naked and doing real debauchery stuff. But honestly, it was entertaining in the sense of the story plot and it worked forward. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, and then we got more out of it too, because there was more discussion points that we're going to go into. And I really love that. And we should go into that now with our uh, discussion points as it were. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk about Soldier Boy first. Um, sure. That that opening scene with him and them bringing him the food, and he's like, "Where's the Oriental sauce?" And I thought, "Yep." And you can't like, call they, it that. They, yeah, <laughs> they don't do that. They don't. They don't give it that. They don't call it that anymore. They don't do that. They don't make that anymore. You know, and in in in, um, in reference to wasn't it McDonald's the Szechuan sauce or something yes, like that? Yeah, so, Szechuan uh, sauce is a McDonald's yeah. thing that they come out every so often. Yeah, but yeah. some people get a little bit crazy about. But the thing is, is also, it's like he kind of said it, the oriental sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I loved that, you know, <laughs> all the things that he's just referencing in the in the thing. And then <laughs> I loved his line when Huey is is naming all the things he didn't know. Like, you don't know what GPS is. You don't know the internet. You don't know this. And he looks at me, you made those words up. I just thought yeah, it was yeah. great. And it reminded me of, of, what was it, Guardians of the Galaxy, where he says, all words are made up. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you're uh, right. <laughs> I, I, really, I really loved it. And uh, then seeing him, you know, snorting up the bennies and drinking, I, it looked like he was drinking Jameson straight out of the bottle. Oh, yeah. And then, and then later he's drinking from a, a souvenir cup, you know. Of a souvenir the, cup of, of the soups. <laughs> yeah, with the Dawn of the Seven on it there. Um, I just, you know, he references Bill Cosby as being the best, making the best drinks, but being yeah. the best TV dad. Um, you know, just uh, all well, things. You could reference Wilhelm when they talk about the, on Father's mm -hmm. Day with that. Yeah, too. yeah I got, I, I've got. <laughs> That at the end in podcast recommendations because they talk about Bill Cosby. Um, he brings up Liberty also, which that was Stormfront's name. Remember yes. before she changed her look and uh, so so I, just really great all the stuff. Um, I I can't wait. I, I wonder if he's going to eventually figure out what his trigger is or if he's just lying to people that he actually knows it's the Russian kind of pop music kind of thing. You or know, if it's because something else, maybe. Yeah. Well, no, we. I mean, I think. I think we know it's got to be that because that's what happened in New York, and he blacked. He says he blacked out, and then that's what was uh, on okay. the radio in the house here before he he exploded. And again, he says he blacked out. I don't know. You it know, could be uh, foreshadowing too for the fact that you know Homelander could use that to get at Soldier yeah. Boy at a later point, and that could be our demise of Soldier Boy. And yeah. it's really scary if he gets that information from. Ashley, all the media people, if they were able to get that, yeah, like, I, that video footage, we'll have to we'll have to see if they're able to figure yeah. it out or something. But um, what else? Oh, the twins mentioning that Noir was the one who who handed him, who had the plan to hand him over to the Russians. So I can't wait to see. Oh yeah, you know, what that confrontation is going to be like because we know Noir, you know, essentially almost can't be killed. It seems. Yeah, you know, um, but I, I gotta well, find out. Some, he could be maimed because we saw that in a oh, flashback. Yeah. He could be and, hurt. Yeah, and that leads me to my first point, which is Noir taking out his tracker, mm -hmm. and that was because of the talk about <clears throat> Soldier Boy going after with Homelander and Ashley and uh, and the Deep, and how they were going to go after his old crew, mm -hmm. you know, Soldier Boy's old crew. And home, you know, Noir just taking it out, cutting it out of yeah. his arm. Oh. And I wonder where the next episode goes with this, particularly because after that, we don't see anything of Noir at all. Mm -hmm. You know, will he be in favor of Butcher and the boys, or will he be in favor of Soldier Boy at yeah. this point? 
Yeah. And, you know, but that was a gruesome scene because even the woman in the elevator, I wouldn't want to be her. You know, and he <laughs> cuts his arm open, hands it to her, and yeah. he's still bleeding out. I guess he has, uh, he could heal fast. Yeah, I think it's like a Deadpool. I think we talked about this in one of the earlier yeah. seasons that it's like a Deadpool kind of thing that he heals from these things. Um, but yeah, it's it really was just a crazy, crazy scene. And the fact that none of them even mentioned the fact that Noir was on Soldier Boy's team. Like, it seems like they almost have blocked that out of their memory because you think that would have been the first thing they thought of is, oh, do you think he's coming after you? Yeah. You know, because Homelander wasn't, when when Deep tells him that he cut out his chip and he left, Homelander's like, no, Noir wouldn't do that. And of course he would do that. Soldier Boy's coming after him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's literally the most public member, uh, well, now that's left, left alive, uh, the most public member of that former team. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He's like one of the OGs mm -hmm. from that particular team. Um, my next one is is just Marvin. I love – we got a lot of backstory on Marvin. We got oh, a lot yeah. of character development on Marvin in this episode. It was really, really cool. I loved his rant about not wanting to turn the other cheek and how – you know, why am I why am I always the one who has to turn the other cheek and be the, be the nice guy? You know, uh, I loved – just his interaction with Starlight and then all the things that happened with him in that house. Um, it was just <laughs> hilarious. Um, but I also love that, that Starlight kind of brings him back to helping people, yeah. you know, there at the end. Um, but we did get the story of what actually happened, what Soldier Boy did to his family. And then that I was just the second time, particularly I was just chilled by Jensen Ackles' delivery of those two words when when uh, when Marvin says you killed my family and Jensen Ackles uh, as Soldier Boy says which one? Exactly. I just was oh I was just it was just a marvelous like delivery of those it, two words. It was words. a definite huge delivery based upon him in a sense that he doesn't know certain things. Well, no, I think it's just I think it's he's killed he's killed so many people's families. That's what over I the think years. it is. Yeah. yeah, I think that's how how that's just how oh because we know he's been around since the forties. Well, exactly. you know, except for when he got taken by the Russians, but still he was around for a good you know forty fifty years before mm -hmm. the Russians got him or yeah. longer. We don't know exactly how long he's been a soup. But man, I just when he said that and the the way it's just it cut deep on mm -hmm. um, Mother's Milk. Marvin yeah. was really hurt in a sense that you don't even know my own family that you killed. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, and it's just so heartbreaking in a sense that Marvin's like, "Are you kidding me? You can't even tell the difference between right. you've people. Killed, you've killed so many families. You've killed so many families and so many people. Oh, oh, yeah." And, and talking to about people that don't really care about anything, Ashley talking to A Train, mm -hmm. you know how she pulls her hair out due to frustration Oof. with her confrontation with him, then opens up to A Train and tells him to go f himself. That was straight up standing up for herself at mm -hmm. that point. I loved it, but the fact is, you could see how much she is so pressured, mm -hmm. and I, I'm like wondering. Will she take V24 at one point and go <laughs> off on people? You know, I it, don't know. It's readily available, apparently. <laughs> you, get, you probably could get it on the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was that was really interesting, too, the way she li lines out all of his – when he's – you know, he's he's so um, – what's the word I'm thinking of? He's he's so mad about Blue Hawk and what Blue Hawk has done yeah. to, to people. And then she turns around and she says, how many people have you killed? How many times have I had to, to you know, clear – up for Cover your up stuff. You. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You murdered Popclaw. You did this, you did that, you know, and then at the end of the episode or towards the end of the episode, it really looked like it, that kind of got to him. This is this is in my notes, so I'm going to I'm going to go okay. off on this a little bit. Good. Um uh Atrian really it looks like he took it to heart what she said because he he sounded to me, he sounded um uh, honest when he yes. told uh when he told Huey Actually. Oh, Huey. Huey? No, when he told Huey sorry about 
kill you know he says you never oh, you never apologize yeah. you never that apologize was... for co- killing my girlfriend and he said and and really he sounded really apologetic he, he was said, very I'm sincere sorry. with that yeah, yeah sincere thank you that's the word that i was he sounded very sincere because he it suddenly then realized he sees what happens when they mess up and they hurt people and he's and he's but then you know huey punches him and we have that old confrontation i'll talk some more about that between huey and starlight <laughs> later but uh but i thought that was it was just a great moment for a train but of course then he drags off blue hawk and kills him and apparently it looks like we may be down an a train at this point yeah because it looked like he was having a heart attack at that point mm-hmm. and uh that's in my notes as well the fact that he took his initiative and in taking out blue hawk after hero gasm and the exploits and explosions that were going on and to me that was I, it was justifiable re- revenge, in my opinion. Uh, Blue Hawk, I don't think he was negotiable in any way. There was no way of turning or changing that person. But, yeah, it, it's like I, I felt for A Train. And I felt for A, <laughs> of all things, Blue Hawk, because his face was getting scraped on the it road. It was pretty brutal. It was a pretty brutal way. It was uh, a brutal way, but th- that's what the show does. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know if he got his just desserts, but he didn't even give, you know, I think A-Train gave him the opportunity to apologize and try to come clean, but he did not. And it's one of those people's convictions. And we saw that in the last episode when you, Rob and myself, were actually talking about that and how he was talking to people and talking down about them. Uh, upon them it, it just it it's really sad and you know it's like oh sorry blue hawk you're gone you're done you're not going to be part of the seven <laughs> um next up for me would be well the whole look of hero gasm at the twins house wow that was well that would that that was something <laughs> a lot of nudity soup debauchery and people wanted to get off sexually, I guess. Uh, there was a lot to take in, obviously, and I already spoke about this before. Uh, it's not Pornhub by hu- any extent at, at that extreme of pornography. A uh, little bit craziness with the soup stuff, as we see. I'm not going to go into details. <laughs> yeah. You got to go see it for yourself. Watch it for yourselves, listeners, because oh, so, I don't want to go into details either. <laughs> exactly. It, it wasn't bad as the movie Caligula, that is for sure, but definitely dirty for Amazon Prime, that is for sure. And honestly, in my opinion, go see it for yourself. If you're faint of heart, don't watch it. If you're not into that kind of thing, don't watch it. You could easily skip ahead. There you go. And then go to the Meteor points which are meatier uh the part of the meat of the story what we need to know so you can go to the very end where you see butcher and huey deal with homelander as well as soldier boy and then the confrontation with uh mm and starlight and how she's talking him down those are the points that are really the meat of the show at this point. And we do get something out of uh, Annie Starlight at the very end, which I'm very grateful for. And I'm, I'm, I'm like worried for her too, but <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, let's see. My next one is a quick one. It's just, it, it, it leans into a little bit of what you talked about, but we'll, we'll get some more of it when, uh, later, but, uh, it, we saw, we get to see Huey and Billy shooting up the V again and mm-hmm. seeing just the relish in their eyes of, of doing it. And then of course, yes. Homelander, when he shoots Billy with his eyes, he doesn't realize that Billy is a soup. And so when Billy comes back, it's that he has that surprise moment of, Oh, you've done something different with yourself, which yes. I was kind of surprised that he didn't notice, you know, like Ryan, was able to notice maybe just he, he wasn't just or paying attention smell it or feel it yeah. in his blood um, like homelander would yeah right you would think but I, I guess he just didn't he wasn't paying attention to that and uh, but of course that all leads to that heartbreaking moment between 
Annie and Huey out there on the road where he says, I saved you. And she says, I, you know, I, I don't want you to save me. I just want you to be my boyfriend basically. Yes. And he's like, I can't do that. I have to be, he, you know, he wants to be the alpha male, even though he's not an alpha male, he wants to be the saver, the savior. He wants, he wants to, be, to be the boyfriend who's there to protect his girlfriend yeah. or the guy who's there to protect his family, someone he loves. Exactly. And I, I I understand that perspective, but it's a new world, and yes, yeah, she is super powered, but she loves him for who he is, and he loves her for who she is, not by her power, but the fact that the power is there really upsets him, because he feels impotent, if you want to put it into layman's term. He feels impotent as a male. And I, I feel bad for him, but the thing is, she can't see it that way, but he can't convey it that way in a sense of making it right so that they could work together with this. Yeah, and we'll you know we'll have to see by the end of the season how how this this turns out if they end yeah. up breaking up or if they end up getting back together before the end of the season or what they leave us with. So or their enemies, who knows. <laughs> Um, well, the last part I would have and everything else is all my notes. Uh, the actual Herogasm event with at the Twins' house. So, uh, let's go into the celebrity cameos. So I was able to pull this off from some website, and apparently they had a list of people that I haven't even seen, and I watched this episode twice. Pat and Oswalt, and you mentioned that that night, on yeah. Thursday night when they released it, you did, and then Rob was like, when I told Rob it's up, he was like, dude, this is amazing, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> the only two the only two I recognized on the second watch were Pat and Oswalt and then Kumail Nanjani yep. there towards yeah. the end. Those two I definitely recognized, but the rest of them, I, I, there's somebody, but go I, ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list them. The others that you didn't catch, but somebody else apparently caught was Josh Gad. Okay. Mila Kunis. Ashton Kutcher. Okay. El Elizabeth Banks. Aisha Taylor and Rose Byrne. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I went past it, Rose Byrne. Yeah. But Aisha Taylor? I'm like, really? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, they're married, but okay, I, I have to go back. I got to look for it. If you anybody could get screen grabs, I I don't care how graphic, but whatever. I just want to see if they're actually in it. Uh, there was another person in there. Um, he's a Korean actor. He was in Harold and Kumar's uh, something for White Castle. Uh, he was in that, and I saw him right away, and he approached Huey, so he's definitely in there. Uh, I, the name is el eluding my mind right now, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows he's been on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast. Let us know. Please put him in the comments when we put this on Facebook. Okay, so I was talking about the scene at the beginning where they're singing the song. Oh, okay. That where they're singing "Imagine." That's where we see Patton Oswalt and Camille Nanjiani. And I think oh, that's where I think that's yeah, where yeah, that, that's where Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are, and Josh Gad then. is. I'm talking um, about within. Oh, okay, the, in the house. The, You're talking about in the house that there was. I'm some, talking in the house. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they used "Imagine" by John Lennon, which was during the pandemic. Okay, so now I'm starting to see it. Oh, Okay. Yeah, that's where Pat Oswalt and Camille Nanjiani show up is the beginning of the episode. Okay, so they weren't part of the debauchery within no, the hero not as, chasm. Yeah, not as far as I know they weren't. But okay. uh, but those other so, ones might have been. The Korean actor, I, now I know, I think I do know, because it was that moment when he runs into Mother's, the guy that runs into Mother's Milk and puts something on his jacket. Correct. And he's like, what did he do to my jacket? That's the guy you're talking All about. Right. So, so they kind of reused uh, stuff that they used during the pandemic when they were trying to gain awareness for people during the okay. pandemic. So that's where that came from. So the only person that was there was that Korean actor at okay. the event. Okay. Now I, I, I'm i starting to develop that in my brain. I'm like, okay. where is this? I thought it was at the event. 
And I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah, you can see all those people in that particular video clip. They were not in that particular yeah. uh, scene during Herogasm. But that Korean actor, com- uh, comedian, was there. Mm-hmm. So, if you guys know the name, let us know. Yeah. So, but... Uh, yeah, what I else? mean that is all. The only other, the other thing I want, I've got a few, a few other things here actually. Right. Um, uh, Victoria Newman and Annie that scene on the little oh, talk show thing was yeah. such an amazing and that moment after the talk show that's just an amazing scene where we see Victoria just laying out everything like she knows that Starlight knows she's the head popper. She knows yep. that Huey knows. She knows that Homelight is a is a. a is a fake thing. You know, she, she realized that she knows that she can't stand working with the deep and all these things that Victoria Newman knows in that moment, kind of um, where, where she kind of threatens starlight a little bit. And I thought in the first step, first time I watched it, I thought I saw a little bit of a nosebleed on Annie. There is. Okay. There is. Okay. Cause, it, cause the second time I didn't catch it in the second time, but I, I, I think there was a little bit of a nosebleed there where she kind of gave her that, uh, a little nosebleed there to tell her that, that she's more powerful than starlight is. Yes. Um, also she suspects that Maeve is dead, which we don't know that yet for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I love that whole monologue that, that starlight gives her about leaving Vaught and, and not giving an F anymore and all that, because it foreshadows what, Annie does at the end of the episode that you started kind of talking about where she, I just, again, another, another monologue that I just loved where she that ends was it amazing. with, yeah, she ends it with, I'm no longer starlight. I'm Annie January. So yeah. it's just, wow, I'm getting choked up just remembering I, it because well, it's such a good monologue. It was such a good monologue. And I think that was the best part of the actual episode. Mm-hmm. It's her opening up saying, I have these powers, but yet yeah, my name is Annie January. Mm-hmm. And yeah, to me, that made a lot more sense. It's basically opening up to the world. I am who I am. Deal with me for who I am. I'm not this uh, Vought created superhero that could be plastered on billboards, uh, on a cup drink, or what have you. Nothing marketed. I am me. And I'm not going to be this person anymore. So now, mind you, Vought's probably going to point out and go after her for that. Now she's going to have to take safety somewhere. And the only place to get safety anywhere is with Butcher and the boys. And now she's upset with Huey and he's part of the boys. So I'm curious. Yeah, uh, I can't wait till next week to see where this goes because, man. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's yeah. We, we might have to bring Rob on again because Rob likes to have fun with this stuff. Because yeah. you know, two it, episodes left. Two yeah, episodes left. We got two episodes left. left. So if you guys want Rob back on, let us know because it was fun having him on. Uh, it was kind of like uh, open forum at that point, and I, I like the open forum, like kind of way we've been doing things lately. Uh, I have uh, a few notes here. Uh, uh, it's uh, by the deep saying now forty nine ninety nine plus tax. They used the pandemic. John. All right. Uh, it was during the whole pandemic thing with the uh, John Lennon thing. Uh, buy deeper for four ninety nine plus tax. <laughs> that was in the corner when he was going up there and then they had the whole roll going through. I thought that was hilarious. Uh um, what we haven't talked about, we haven't talked about Kimiko and, and Sergey yet, and, and Frenchie. Oh uh, yeah, the, everything that went on with that, you know, Kimiko. I, uh, it's, it was so again, it was just one of those moments in the show that made me made me feel bad for her when she realizes the same thing that Butcher kind of talked about in the last episode, to where yes. the V just kind of enhances who you are, and she re- and she's telling Frenchie that I had this in me all all along yeah. and Frenchie's like no no it's not that's not you that's not who you are and she's like well yeah this is who we are and and even she says to Frenchie that stuff was not true that, mm-hmm. that that Nina said about you but she knows it's true so it's it's I just I love where these characters are going and I don't know how how far they're going to get into this mm. um I was part of me the first time I watched it. I was kind of hoping that maybe her powers would reactivate and she she heal. Here. Yeah, but I'm I'm kind of glad she didn't because she's very fierce and formidable just on her own. 
you know, and uh, so her and Frenchie, she and Frenchie are going to have to figure out a way to live without without powers and and so it just it just really was a great again another great scene of seeing them there with Cherie and to see how that's going to develop in the next the next few episodes as well what's going to happen with Nina cuz remember Nina got away yeah. even though some of her men were killed so obviously we're going to see uh some more of that so uh yeah I, that's that's the last of my points oh i have a lot of them but uh, i'll okay. start with the first one <laughs> Uh, what's with the sticky goo from Huey's ear? Did you oh, notice that? Yeah, I did notice that. I, I saw that and I had it in my notes, but I, I forgot to, uh, to, to mention it. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. If that's a side effect of the V or, or what? So it's, it's going to be, we'll have to see where that comes from. Yeah. I wonder if it, uh, mutates and then something goes on, uh, Homelander's little talk with himself within the mirror. Uh huh. He yeah, is, I had that, this in my notes. He's basically self-healing within himself, giving himself confidence. He is basically self-deprecating, and, and the mirror self literally is helping him in some way. And mm, is that see, I something saw from it, his subconscious? You know, that that's my yeah, thought. Yeah, see, I saw it more of like a schizophrenia kind of, because he well, says... he is nuts. He, he <laughs> says, because the, the mirror guy says, I took care of us when we were in the bad room, remember? And it's mm. kind of that thing of, of pushing down one personality and another personality coming out. Yeah. So he's definitely crazy. <laughs> so. so basically, we're getting a Moon Knight here in The Boys with dissociative disorder <laughs> personality. Uh, this is Associative personality disorder, yeah. I should say. Yeah, you okay. might see that. Uh, there is a Wilhelm scream with the twins movie with Soldier Boy. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, uh, yeah, Soldier Boy not knowing about what happened within Manhattan. He blacked out and didn't know what happened. So that's going to be an ongoing thing. So something somebody could actually trigger at any given point. Uh, you already talked about Butcher and Huey shooting up in front of him. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of quotes that I haven't used yet. Um, first one was when, uh, when Annie was taking pictures of deep in his, uh, his fish, his fish liaison. She says, oh, yes. Homelander is going to love this. <laughs> She's taking <laughs> pictures of him. Well, that's, uh, that's payback for her. Yeah, honestly, exactly. From exactly. season one. <laughs> exactly. Um, I loved uh, soldier boy is just getting started by Marvin when he figures out what soldier boy is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my last one is just when, when butcher comes back from getting the information about the twins and Huey says, you're bleeding. And he says, not mine. I just thought was, was a great, a great, butcher kind of lines not mine not my blood you know not my blood yeah exactly yep. right <laughs> uh i have a few quotes uh one will be well he's not a Mel- uh, emmanuel lewis and that soldier boy to butcher about homelander <laughs> no no that was about when he said he killed that was that was to butcher when he said he killed he killed gunpowder and he said that's like killing emmanuel lewis oh it's like, okay, it's like a right. nothing like gunpowder was a nothing wrong. was a nothing kind of kid yeah yeah okay. but it is a great line uh well <laughs> well Bill Cosby is American's dad and he wouldn't be caught within that gear I tell you and that soldier boy about what he sees on TV. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh and then come on the deep fakes of me blowing uh, uh, of Bin Laden they were yeah. asking for it and that was Victoria about why she blew up the people in Congress. Yeah, you know, that to was get her great. Position. Yeah. Yeah, th- those are the only few quotes that I got. Uh, apparently, I got that one about Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, that that was those were our thoughts, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it's so funny that this episode, like we said before, is uh, off like a crazy train. You know, we 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 have so much going on about this particular show that everybody can just talk about it regularly. It might not be regular water cooler talk, but it's what we talk about. So, (laughs) and for those people that were, uh, when Rob was on with us last, uh, you know, he, he said basically, uh, when I told him episode 
six was up the other night when you said to me it's up on Thursday. He goes, he goes, damn, I will see it. And he goes, yo, did you see this episode? Holy poop! <laughs> and I said, yeah, it was wild. So, yeah, Rob's on board. He's been on board since. So, yeah, he loves what's going on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that that's basically our coverage about the boys. And uh, let's move on to uh, what we normally do with this particular podcast. <laughs> I did not see any feedback uh, on Same Instagram uh, or Facebook. So um, just uh, people, if you got feedback, send it on in. We'll, we'll love to hear it. Exactly. And uh, well, how can people submit their feedback? Well, as always, we tell you that we are available on all the uh, the podcast players of, of choice. If there's an opportunity for you to re- give us a review on there, we would love that. We'll give you a shout out here on the podcast for it. Awesome. And you can check out our website, which will be panels to pixels And it's currently under construction. Like I stated, it will be available by the end of July. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at Panels 2 Pixels. That's Panels, the number two, Pixels. And you can send us an email where you can send us a straight up email with just uh, words or heck, attach attach a voice message to it. And we'll play it here on the podcast. That email address is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's Panels to Pixels 1, the T-O spelled out right in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. Yes. And you can find us on YouTube. So you could... All you have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast and we'll be found. You can see our image from our podcast artwork. Just subscribe, follow, and give us a thumbs up if you like the content there that there is on there. Honestly, uh, I did the Kevin Smith. We do video on occasion. When I go to Terrificon with Rob Moda, who was on the last episode... We will probably do some video from Terrificon with interviews if we do any, or just cover the event as we're there. So, uh, Terrificon is located at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, and it's going to be on the 29th till the 31st of July. So, Rob and I will probably be there that Saturday on the 30th. So, uh, you know, check in. We will provide the YouTube. So... Check it out when it's there. We not only do our podcast on the YouTube with just a blank screen with obviously our our image of our podcast, but we also do video as well, just like with the Kevin Smith interview or with the Comic Book Man on the 100th episode. Uh, Kevin was 200th, Comic Book Man was 100. So, uh, yeah, we're... We're going to try to provide a little bit more video as time pursues. So, you know, just keep track with that. And we love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Very cool. We are on Instagram at panels, two pixels podcast. That's panels, two pixels podcast, all spelled out. And check out all the other podcasts on the next level podcast network. We highly recommend them all. Wilhelm, I just got to listen to uh, the father's day special with, Ben and Kristen, and I thought that was pretty cool. I listened yeah, to too. it on the way back. So uh, there you could listen to the Wilhelm. You could uh, listen to the Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them out all there. And just go to their links or just go to your podcast player of choice and subscribe and listen to them there. We highly endorse all of them. Very, very cool. Coming up for us will be the next episode of Ms. Marvel, which is Destined. And then, of course, we'll continue our coverage of The Boys, and eventually we will be picking up the Umbrella Academy as well. Yes, and within the next two weeks. Uh, Where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I submit uh, voice messages to various podcasts that our friends do when I remember to do them, and uh, uh, they play those uh, particularly that I've been doing, uh, trying to keep up on Strange Indeed, which is covering Stranger Things uh, Season 4 right now. I send them voice messages often, and then as as well as on the Podcasting Network, what WTF is from, trying to, to catch up with them as well. 
Awesome. And as always, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. They're in where we cover fantasy, action, adventure, suspense, and thriller films. Anything that gets your adrenaline going. So coming up, obviously, Top Gun Maverick. I know I've been talking about it a lot. It's edited. I finally got to go see it yesterday. It's awesome. amazing. <laughs> it's so lived up to the hype. I have one. I have a, a couple little quibbles with it, but not not Same anything. Here. Yeah. Not, not anything that takes away from the overall of of the movie. So it's uh, it's really really good. Yeah, same here. And you guys could hear that probably soon after you get this particular podcast. Uh, we, we'll, I'll be on doing contact with Lizzie from Aim for the Head, and after that will be Jerry Gomez and myself. We're we're going to be talking about uh, the Angry Red Planet, and then continue our coverage about uh, the the Apes movies. And obviously, we're going to go right into Predator. And we're going to do Prey, which is the, what is it? Is it the fourth episode or fourth movie of There's the Predator series? There's so many series? Predator. There's so many in the Predator. If you include the Alien in Predator series, there's so many. Out okay. That it's, so it's basically crazy. the yeah, newest I think, iteration, as yeah, it were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think straight up Predator is maybe this would be the fifth one. Because I think Predator, Predator 2, and then The Predator and Predators. Mm -hmm. I think, or Predators, and then The Predator. I think those are all the straight kind of sequels. But if you yeah. if you lump in the Alien versus AVP. Predator yeah. movies, um, there's a, a three or four more as well. So, yeah. So basically, you'll listen to you'll listen to me and Steve talk about Predator, and then we're going to go into Prey. Hopefully, we'll continue on with the the rest of the Predator series. We could do Predator Two. We could do Predators. And then The Predator, hopefully. And <laughs> we can have fun with those. So you can listen to me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Uh, all you have to do is go to piratecoreentertainment.com. And you can check all the feeds there for Run For Your Lives, Watch It in the 80s, Fantasy, uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, and Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, obviously, we're on every player of choice. Check them all out. And uh, that's pretty much it. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll check you out on the next panel. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>